Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking in we're in Blender 2.91 and we're looking at the I think it's 2.92 now. And um we're looking at the paper roll motion tutorial. So let's get straight into it. Alright, now this is an interesting tutorial. It's gonna be very short, but like its inscape counterpart. But it touches on a feature which I didn't know um, existed for a long time. And um, even though I knew the, t the modifier, I didn't know it could do this, which is um, a very, very important tool that Blender needed or needs, or now that I know it has, but it really needed for motion graphic um, artists like ourselves, you know, especially um, it's is what is one of the quintessential tools. So I'm gonna get into it so that you can see this tool and um uh during the explanation tutorial I'll get into that. So we've got our paper towel, we've got everything here, the two yellow pieces and the middle brown the middle beige piece. Um it's really just everything is the same apart from I've deleted the lines. Um you could import them and use them but I just deleted them so because we're gonna create them in Blender anyway so um just for just to create them in blender this time but you didn't have to delete them okay so let's get into it the first thing we're going to need to do is that we're going to need to create a plane or a box but basically a plane first i prefer to use the plane first so we're going to hit shift and a and we're going to create a plane g and z and lift this up good and i'm just going to go ahead into shayless mode for a bit so that we can focus on this more so it's just a plane and we're just going to use the middle mouse button and hold it down and then just pan out good and we can see our plane right here and then we're just going to go ahead and with going to edit mode press tab and automatically all the vertices are selected good then we're going to press e for extrude on our keyboard and we're going to make sure it's extruding on the Z axis by default it does, but you want to press Z um, and you'll see the blue line and that will tell you that blue line coming up and down and that will tell you that you're extruding on the Z axis. Good, then you're going to pull this down, let's ever so slightly, not so big, just enough. And this is usually about the thickness that you need when you're dealing with a flat SVG. Good, and what we're actually doing in this is that we're this box is going to be a clipping mask and that's the feature that I didn't realize Blender had but really needs you know if you're going to do motion design of any sorts clipping masks are very very important in motion graphics flat designed um, infomercials is, is used a lot so now that I know Blender has it you know that's going to up my motion game and any motion art, um, this artist who's going you know, into the 2D flat type of motion graphics that you see on my channel and that, um, of the ones I've done, like the Wind Energy and the um, Vector versus Rasta, even though those are old, will benefit a lot from knowing this tool. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna first, just before we activate the tool, we're gonna go to Transform Properties and we're gonna go down to Visibility, or well, is it Visibility? No, Viewport Display and where it has display as textures we're going to have it displayed as wire good so now we can see the object that we're masking below cool while still seeing the masking object itself which is this plane next we're going to go over to this area here which gives us a list of all of our objects i've forgotten the name of this what they call this area and we're going to go up to the filter icon up at the top right and we want to make sure that disable in view disable in renders is activated i already activated mine but by default it's not activated for you and you'll see this camera icon come up and what you want to do is for this plane let's rename it to mask one we're going to change the camera icon it's going to click it so that this doesn't show up in the final render Cool, but we see in the viewport. Next, 
we're just going to go ahead and pan with our middle mouse button so that we're vertical and we just want to make sure that this 3d plane envelops or covers the entirety of the object that we want to mask out which is this one right here good and make sure to there's enough C space between the top object and the bottom one you know so that you can get the best results cool and we see that it is indeed in there next we're just gonna press zero to come back to our camera mode we're gonna select this piece right here and we're gonna go over to our modifiers tab which is this wrench right here and with the modifiers tab we just want to select the boolean modifier <laughs> mine's on there already but let's go and search out so that you can see how i did it i think boolean is is it here which one is it in under generate can't remember which one it's for again uh where is the boolean oh under generate for true Cool. and then you'll have three options difference union intersect for this instance we're going to use intersect but distance and union are both good too but for masking intersect is really the one that you want to deal with for internal masking um, for external difference is what you want to deal with but this is an internal mask so we're going to be using intersect and now we're going to select the object for which is going to be doing the masking okay well i'm not sure what that was but there was a bug where it wasn't showing up so i just closed it and reopened it and um started to show well this is the result that you're supposed to see you're supposed to see the um the object because it's been intersected by the plane but if we move the object move the masking object with g and say y we can see that the piece below it the piece that's been intersected here the piece of paper disappears when we move the object up and down and this is a true clipping mask so it doesn't affect anything on the rest of the sh on the scene um, this is a true quick clipping mask and this is fantastic you know um, this is a big big thing and um, you should use the heck out of this because I don't see any performance hit with it so use it so this is how we're going to basically animate this paper roll in and we're basically just going to duplicate and do the same thing for all of these here so I'm going to duplicate it and carry over I'm going to use S and Y just scale it up so we're going to do our mask for this one here now this piece here the long piece uh, we're just going to use the middle mouse button, pan out, scroll in. Uh, I'm going to press G and Z to lift it up. Cool. And yeah. Doesn't interfere with the mask below it. And um, G. Cool. And then we're just going to duplicate one more time. We can make this a bit smaller too. It's a bit long. So let's just use S and we duplicate it and we're going to make a mask for this one down here too so we're just duplicating with shift and d and making masks for all of these piece three pieces of paper so we've got one for this one behind one for the middle one for here and to check that it's on the correct z axis in between the thickness of the mask you can always just pan over to see and we can see that indeed they are All right cool so with that blender has a 0 0.01 naming convention so i'm just going to change this to mask 2 and change this one to mask 3 in the naming scheme so it's easier to find and now we're going to just mask this one right here so we're going to add a boolean I'm going to select the object mask 2 and we're going to add a boolean for this one now and select the object mask 3 now because i had already done this you can see that the boolean has already been activated and all we're going to do now is animate the paper itself the mask themselves animate in this paper so let's go ahead and lift up our timeline and we're going to go over to like one 
or zero any one is good and we're going to go ahead and start adding some keyframes so let's go to transform let's just minimize the viewport display go back to the transform values here and I'm just going to go ahead and animate so it's going to animate on the wax let's just start with this one at the back and bring this down right here and I'm going to insert a single keyframe so I'm just going to right click on the Y insert single keyframe move it about um, five frames and then lift this up insert single keyframe so it comes up in fact let's give it a bit more time so that we can see it cool this looks about right eight frames let's make it ten just for even sake yeah good and next we're going to do animate this one so at frame 10 we want it to start at y insert single keyframe um, let's just have it it's going to move from top down so we're going to start it from here set keyframe and we're going to move it another 10 frames to about frame 20 and then just bring it down until it shows insert single keyframe and then at frame 20 now we're going to start this one and this is going to start from below insert single keyframe and we're going to move on to 30 and lift this up good so even though the interpolation is wrong bet between them if we press space on our keyboard to play we can see that the paper shows through awesome cool and the last thing on this now is just to animate the to animate the lines of text that we see on there which is a simple animation uh, you can always play about with interpolation I don't spend too much time on that I think interpolation itself requires a, a series you know for you to look at for the laws of motion so that you can get the cleanest and nicest interpolation you know but for now what you can do is go to the graph editor i think i'm in mine already i should have been in the timeline oops <laughs> it should be now we're going to the graph editor and you can select this go to the animation channel press a on your keyboard then press del on your keyboard too and that will zoom into the the curves <laughs> cool and then you can animate them in accordance to what you wish to animate yeah. All right, so I think it's control and A also right, let me just zoom in here and you can pull these up to your heart's content to get the animation you want and you can always just play about with these afterwards uh, in terms of what you are looking for you know so you just in your own time you can go through those type of things but I'll definitely have to dedicate a different series to interpolation but for now this looks okay cool so we have this let's go ahead and just animate in our lines so we're going to create a plane with a mesh yeah and using shift a and just scale it along the x-axis cool and um, let's make it a bit shorter bring it across with g and we're going to hold shift select this green here we're going to hit ctrl and l to link the materials so that we link this green for the circle to this make sure that the object that you are linking to is the last selected cool and then we're just going to go ahead and in fact let's make this full size you can always shine it with the shape keys cool and then we're going to go into our object data properties we're going to make sure shape keys is opened we're going to click plus for two shape keys the basis which is the beginning of the sh of the shape and the key which is what we're going to be morphing to or shaping to cool and 
we just want to make sure that we go into edit mode by pressing tab and we're going to press G and X. We can use the snap tool up here just to help us out. Make sure vertex is selected. See the magnet up here and it will snap to the vertices. Then we press tab, unclick the snap tool and if we toggle the value now, we can see that it does indeed animate. Cool. So let's animate this in in the right place. We want that when this comes down, this starts animating. So about at frame, let's say frame 14. We want this to start animating. So insert keyframe and by frame 20. Let's see, we can see animated in. Oops. All right, so increase the value up. So let's see how it plays. Yeah, that's about right. And then we're just going to duplicate this several times. GY, duplicate, GY, duplicate and press G and then Y on your keyboard, G to grab, Y to determine the access, the axes to grab onto. And then we're just duplicating with Shift D and press G and then press Y on your keyboard, you know, to bring it down. Then we're going to go over to our timeline and is it timeline we want to go to? In fact, let's go to our dope sheet. That may be easier. Cool. And then we're simply just going to stagger these. So just make sure you select them and stagger them a bit. And you can see how much you're staggering them by. So that when you open it, yeah, you see that there are stagging, staggering indeed. And I'm just going through this quickly by hand, you know, yeah. But you can spend more time. And then for this top one now, we want to make sure that it ends at a lower value. So let's bring it in a bit about here. Place keyframe because it's the title. Yeah. And that gives us a paper scroll animation tutorial. Let's just put this in shade. Okay. It's not showing. Let me just see why it's not showing. Shows here. GZ, bring it to the top. Make sure it's above. It is indeed above. Um, let me just check to see if this has emission. Yes, it does. Not sure why it's not showing. Oh. It's on the same Z plane. Okay then, fair enough. Let's just lift this up on the same Z plane. Let's put G and Z and then just come back. Yeah, let's play it over. Excellent. Yeah, and that gives you your paper roll tutorial. So if you enjoy the tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, be free to ask. I'll be I'll be sure to answer them as much as it's in my ability to do so. And um, remember, this is a very, very important tool. I'm going to be using the heck out of it. You should too. Um, and that's the Boolean modes intersect and difference for clipping masks. Very, very, very good tool. Cool. So until I see you again with another tutorial, get up and design a new dawn. Later.